Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar Talk. Today we are having a nice and enough uh, Friday afternoon. Um, I'll have this up tomorrow for everybody to enjoy in the weekend. And we're just looking at what's going on in the ESO forums and kind of discuss what's going on from there as well as some other topics. So first topic of the day, flying hovering mount. So vein blood 1965 says, just a thought, why not introduce a flying mount? I don't mean one that actually flies around way up high, um, just one that stays a few feet off the ground and has animated wings with feet that do not touch the ground, like a griffin, for example. As much as I would love to see that, I think there's better things that the development team can be used for right now. There's a lot of stuff in the um, in the game that they could, you know, be better off than just a flying mount. Um, and then uh, Arune says, because even that requires the same coding to allow for 3D movement, like you see flying and underwater swimming. If they did anything like this, the mount's hitbox would still be moving along the ground. That means that you get hung up on terrain that looks like you should just be able to fly over. There's no actual flight in this game. Flying enemies move on set paths through the game space. They don't have free movement through the X, Y, and uh, X axes. So, I mean, I agree. There's <clears throat> there's just a lot of stuff that can happen, a lot of bugs, a lot of like glitches that can happen with that. Um, as much as I would love to see flying mounts, um, I think they're cool and all. I just do not think ESO is ready for it um, altogether. But hey, you know that's a thought for the future if they ever have something that they can do, and you know that's something they can bring up. And the next. Is Harrow Storms need to scale to the number of players? Oh my god, that's true. Uh, Silverblight says, I just finished doing a hair storm before other players, and it took a ridiculous amount of time and multiple deaths before we finally finished it. Western Skyrim is in a current zone, and there aren't many players doing these anymore. Please make these scale to the number of players so we can succeed at them in smaller groups. Getting a full group is impossible unless there's an event going on in the zone that calls for them. This would be great for the quality of life patch this year. And then she tags Gina and Kevin, please consider this. Sparta XOXO says all it would take is slowing down or stopping ghosts based off of number of players. If they were really slow with a small group, then as long as at least one person slowing killing them, the mini bosses wouldn't spawn. One player means no or very slow ghost. They ha already have respawn checks when a pipe goes down, so it can check number of players to determine new ghosts at that time. Alternately, um, they could go extremely fast when there's a large crowd, so the storms are chaos when there's tons of people. I mean, I know they are technically solvable as is because I've done that, but it's not possible for many people in overland i agree <clears throat> i really do think um and uh sparta xo xo like they they bring him a perfect example like anytime a pipe goes down like check for the number of players like in that specific area and then determine if more ads need to spawn or not so uh, Silver Blood, this says, it doesn't matter if some players solo these, most players can't, and there are not many players doing them anymore to find a decent sized group. We were all focusing on the same pikes and killing the ghosts, but the amount of mini bosses was ridiculous. It shouldn't have been nearly as bad as it was for just five players. I mean, I agree, not everybody has high DPS. Um, so, like, you know, a lot of people are saying, yeah, the, they need some adjustments. I, I agree, um, you know it's it, it really does need it uh it's a little bit harder for just the casual person to to get them so some love there would probably be beneficial and um and then sparta says yes i agree that's why i suggested slowing down the ghost they actually buffed the ghost speed a while back they used to go slower and they were and when they were stunned they stopped moving to the pike at all this allowed them to be able to be stopped from reaching the pikes one person could prevent any champions from spawning. There is even an achievement for not allowing any bosses to be spawned. Then they decided that they shouldn't get the Sable or Sun or move so slowly anymore. And now it's basically impossible not to have the champions spawn unless there's a ridiculous amount of players power the pikes. I would bet hardly anyone gets that achievement anymore outside of events. Though much of the player base probably has it anyway thanks to the events and um, 
If they slowed down the ghost, depending on the number of people at the pikes, you wouldn't get champions anymore at pikes where at least one person is paying attention to the ghosts. If there's no champions, it makes the hero storms reasonably able to be completed by an average small group. Ghost speed, depending on group size, would also make them more challenging during events, which is the opposite problem caused by the same core issue. The hero storms don't change based on the number of players. Yeah, exactly. If you were to change the hero storm based on the number of players in that area, like in that little area, then you would have so many different things. I would highly agree this is the way to go. Just kind of scale it to the number of players in the area. And, you know, by the time a pike goes down, like, rescale it again okay it's harder you know like two more people came in okay we need to make it a little bit harder okay four more people came in you know harder 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 so there you go i agree i agree i agree they need to do something about the hair storms um and scaling to the number of players the way that sparta xoxo has said it like this would be perfect it would uh it would be great then, um, for the health of the game, retire all crown crates. Merpin says, I understand that crown crates are a financial decision to help the game stay afloat. I personally do not believe the game needs this system at all, both for financial stability and other factors. I believe it is an explorative practice. Um, you're not the only one. But let's assume that the game cannot survive without crown crates. Rather than reusing the crates that came out years ago in Infinitum, I think crates should be retired entirely after a number of years. Definitely continue to do what is currently being done, reuse and reintroduce new crates for limited time sales. Players still want to get the crates that have come and gone, but I think crates for numbers of years ago, let's say five, six years ago, should be retired and their item pools should be added to the game as collectible cosmetics. Yeah, but how are you gonna do that? Um. The game is currently lacking earnable cosmetics in game. It lacks real reason for players. Oh, so he wants the. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it would. It's not even about the mound power. It's like it, they're not gonna be willing to give you free cosmetics. Like if this is what happens, then the people that will wait five years to get a cosmetic are going to wait five years rather than spending money in the game. Um, I mean, it'd be cool if they retired the crown crates and, um, you know, maybe did something cool that you could potentially buy, like, you know, the apex mount or something, um, in a vendor for crowns, whatnot for endeavor points. But I mean, I get it. Um, I mean, yeah. Then VSRSAU says, I thought the Endeavor system and the Endeavor sealed section of the crown, crown store fit the definition of earnable cosmetics, or are you talking about something else? Um, and then he says, the Endeavor system is designed to get players to play the game every day in order to earn enough to get something good. It's a micromanagement system similar to games like Farmville. That is to get players hooked on an easy thing they can do every day, even if it doesn't really give much of a reward. Endeavors take a couple minutes a day to complete and give basically nothing. You need to do them constantly every day for six plus months to be able to earn anything substantial. The problem with a system like this in a game like ESO is ESO isn't a mobile game. You just can't pick up your phone and do a system like this without really thinking about it. Um, yeah, you can. It's called PSN Remote Play. Um... I mean, I don't know if Xbox has a thing like that, but like we can do it. Remote play, that's doable. Um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> doubt you can convince us to do this. It's, it's very, very heavy financial loss. I mean, I could see them. I could see them get now actually I have a good idea one thing they could do is they could bring back um, like X crates with um, like the best of the best of like four or five crates like the best of the best of 2022 in crates 
and pick like cosmetics and the motifs and all that stuff like and then sell that um as as a crate so like let's say in 2022 you had four crates that year okay you could take together those four crates and have it to where you put together a new crate that comes out in years later with like the most um you know like cool things about that um and you could potentially change it every year um to to get or you could just ram all four of those you know crate stuff together in one um i mean it could it could be doable it it's a pain in the butt but it could be doable um in theory i like the idea i i i mean yeah cosmetic earnable cosmetics is good but <laughs> um you know i don't know i don't know i don't think they're gonna go for it like the only way they'll go for it is if they'll put they'll put it in some sort of crate later um and i could see them like just mashing up like four or five crates together and putting it into one big crate um and actually that would be cool though like let's say charge 10k crowns and then have it to where you're guaranteed a like a mount um a motif and like a costume or something and then like you have some guarantees in there for 10k crowns um or like two mounts uh a motif and like two costumes and then the the others and then you have a chance for the apex obviously but yeah they ain't gonna do that um Forza Rammer says, good job on the hiring update sauce. Once a day, reset at fixed time is so much better than 12 hour. I agree. Um, <laughs> this is probably going to be one of the coolest things that I'm so going to enjoy because we're going to get more stuff out of the hirelings. If you do not have hirelings on your tunes, then you at least log on to every day. Like, just do it. Get the skill points. Ram up that skill do it it'll be worth it trust me it will be worth it so um sparta says i don't mind the concept but i wish they had picked a better time for na servers i don't know i don't even live in a big city and they close it down earlier than many restaurants it should be ideally be at the time that most people are asleep in na but also time that staying up too late to catch a reset for whatever reason you need is not impossible something like their old time for 1 a.m i don't know what the time um i think it's 6 a.m yeah or do they, like i don't i don't get it and i mean kevin came back and says this this worries me here um, one small flaw. I'm receiving less quality items than before. Purple or gold hiring items are fewer than before. Um, so maybe there is something going on there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Alright. This is something I wanted to talk about. For a long time, I'm just waiting for somebody to say something in the forums. Because this needed to happen. Crash Test says, Sauce, please curate monster set coffers for shoulders. The grind is maddening. Um, the monsters should be the monster shoulders need to be curated. The grind and farm for keys in, induces ESO burnout. We shouldn't have to spend hundreds of keys and never get the shoulder we're after. I spent over 200 keys once and still didn't get the piece I was after. 200 keys equals 50 days or nearly two months, assuming one character and base dungeon hard mode. That's over three months if you only do normals. So uh and before you just do it in a couple characters that just makes you burn out faster there's only so much of the same dungeons you can do on the same day it's no wonder people just speed through them um um <laughs> oh my goodness so this says, I hope you don't mean Osasan because that's the shoulder I'm after. 
EF321 had a 99.6% and crashed at 99.9. Maybe it's bugged. It is Osazan. It grants minor vitality, grants unique Osazan buff, but not actual armor. I spent 20 keys on the one key boxes and got nothing. Then I spent 30 more keys on the five key boxes and got five out of the six possible shoulders. With more and more DLC monster sets getting added to the list, it is getting way too long to take benefit of the one key boxes any longer. That is true. They need to split the DLC boxes, in my opinion. Um, I would highly recommend you save any and all on that keys you get from activities throughout the year on the pledges, event coffers. I can't recall, um, and only use them on mystery coffers during Undaunted Celebration. This is how you'll get the most out of your keys and with the added benefit that you won't feel like you're being robbed of your hard work. This is how I went from an almost empty sticker book on shoulders during last Undaunted Celebration to almost filled sticker book. You'll also get a lot of goodies like the mercenary style pages and if you're lucky the whole book. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. Uh, Kisaki says, you know, if you want to set right now, then it makes sense. You can't wait for months. So, the sauce has described himself to be against the idea of endless grinding in the past. It's why we have the transmute system so our efforts can be more wisely spent. There should be no reason not to implement drop creation for shoulders, but it's not the only option they have. Um, an alternative would be to add a new undaunted assistant who trades some of these coffers to even out the chances that a one coffer deal may give. Yes! Our only frames of reference to decide what is fair are Maj and Gleron. However, so halving the amount you can get from one red drop will not even close to evening the odds, leading to the creation being the- Yeah! That's what I was saying earlier, like, maybe they split. The DLC content so yep there you go um, so today um, or this week they had um, a bunch of the content creators get together like Nephis is right there um, and they got together in San Francisco and played the Arcanus for the first time um, so I don't see skinny in there, but I didn't see skinny. Am I missing something? Hmm. Uh, it says it looks like those with past criticism either didn't get the invite or didn't show up. Um, I mean, Deltia and Nephis have been pretty critical, so I agree. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, they had a, a saw sign I posting as for the pick. Uh, Matt Fair, Nephis, Deltia, and Lucky Ghost. Don't know the others. No offense if you are one of them. Can someone throw me the names? Um, okay. So back row is Man Cave Gaming, Lucky Ghost, Delta and FS, Sauce, Brian Wheeler, Front Row, Sauce, Jeremy Sarah, Lotus of Doom, USP Ednet Founder, uh, Sauce, Matt Fear, Sauce, Gina Bruna, and California. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe not everybody, you know, maybe not everybody went. Um, that's a possibility. I mean, people got stuff to do too. Like people got jobs and, and whatnot. Some of these content creators, they're not full time. Um, so yeah, there you go. All right, next one. Um, surveys need an update. A few years ago, someone suggested combining a solution, but it was never done. I believe that at this moment, most players just delete surveys. Um, I don't. Seemed nice at the beginning, but now way it, the way it works is just trash in the bag. It's cool you just have one survey, but with more than one, it's a pain to collect. Um, uh, 
I mean, I, I do agree that you should change it so that each survey is one piece of five or eight with a randomized location that you can use the serving tool to track. Um, then have the rewards worth 10 or 100 times. I mean, it's... I this this is actually what I would like it better. I would be happy if the survey reset the moment you finish harvesting the last node or a few seconds after. So you don't have to ride to the distance. You don't have to move, you know, or anything. Then I would like them to be consolidated somewhat for regions like Rothgar, Craglorn, that have trick locations. Where rather they only had one. That's that's true. I'd rather just have one survey. I mean, I like this. If they could have it to where as soon as you finish harvesting the last node, then if you have it checks, like the system checks your your inventory. Um, and it's your inventory, not your bank or anything. Your inventory. If in your inventory you have another survey like that, then it takes a few seconds, pop, they pop again. And then instead of running or riding off to a distance, I do agree with that. I would like to see that as a quali quality of life. Um, a lot of people would love that. Um, that way, you, all you have to do is just wait a couple of seconds and then, oop, you're back. Wait a couple of seconds and then consolidate them. Exactly. You have three locations sometimes for each survey type. That's so ridiculous. Just put them all in one. Like... Okay, this is where the blacksmithing is. This is where the clothing is. This is where the uh, alchemy is. This is where the enchanting is. This is where the jewelry is. Put them all in one spot. It's so much better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I know you can run. Um, so I, this guy, Bloody Stigmata, has a few ideas. Have all the dupl duplicate surveys for spot you're collected at once. Um, no. Um, I do like the idea that they put earlier where it checks for your survey after you harvest, takes a few seconds, and then they pop up. Um, I still think you should get, you should still, like, crap or harvest each node individually because then what's what's not to stop people from just like getting a bunch of surveys and then one day they just go do them and it's like one big um one big large node no i do like the the uh, other ideas that's to create a survey box to drop your surveys off in then literally hire your hirelings to go out and collect them for you for a set cost per survey I would be okay with this. This adds another gold sink to the game and lets you avoid doing work. I mean, it would be nice to do that, but um, I do like the survey box. Um, so like a craft bag for your surveys. I do like that. Uh, Cause they're already bound to your account. So, you know. And then three, send your non-combat pets and survey expeditions. It's about the time for those little fleet loaders to make themselves useful. Oh, God. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, I can imagine my husband sending his guar out to, to the fields to freeload some stuff. Um, and that's four, add a perk to each crafting skill tree that lets your characters go out and collect surveys on your behalf while you're not on that character. While we're on the subject, maybe add poison ingredients, mushroom. Yes, yes, yes. They need to do this. They need to do this because that is a problem. <laughs> um, like maybe have each survey like be, um, hey, mushrooms or you know water plants, poison ingredients. Yeah, I agree. I do like some ideas, but the I like the survey box, but not to drop your surveys in and then get your hirelings to collect them, no. Even though that's a cool idea and all, Sauce would never go for that, even if it's another gold sink. Um, they're not going to do that. But I do like the survey box where in a portion, portion of your crafting bag, they can be stored 
I do like that. Um, so if you have the craft bag, you can store them in there. If you don't have the craft bag, then you're SOL. Um, but I do like that. I do like that. I do like that. It's great. It's great. So, yeah. Well, those are some of the cool things that uh, we have seen. Remember, folks, Kugi Madness is destined for this weekend. This weekend, they're doing Western, Western Skyrim Dolmens. And then on 4-2, they're doing a potato hunt and custom contest. We'll have the next set of events after in a couple of weeks, uh, probably next week. And make sure you guys, um, you know, if you're listening to this on Saturday, we do have trials Saturday and Sundays, 4 p.m. Eastern. You can get in contact with Hades or Ivory or sign up on Discord. There's no like CP requirement, no experience, no gear checks or anything like that. This is literally to make sure that you get some normal trial weekends and you get to go and battle with your guildies so check that out if uh if you like if you're not social it's okay you don't have to talk or anything just say you're not um you know comfortable and we can get that for you um make sure to thank our cougar city boosters scoring music on 9x reading x merc and myself and if you like to become a booster, please do so. Our Discord needs some love. Um, boost it up all the way so we can get you there. And all, as always, if you cannot do that, if you have money problems, don't do that, please. It's okay. Now, one important announcement. The housing contest that is coming soon will be announced next week in our Cougar Talk next week. And if you would like to become a Kugi, if you're not part of the guild, you can definitely hit that guild tab um, from somebody. Enjoy um, putting an application or just say, hey, you know, get us in there. So thank you so much, guys, and have a good day.